and to praise the name of Jehovah God. We are the children of God giving praise and thanks to the God, God Almighty for what he has done for us in this time, a different time. And I am glad to be alive today. I can go back and say years from now, I went through this period. And so we're going to turn in our hymnals to start off to number 13. And we're going to sing that song, then I'm going to invite our brother Garnet White to come and do the opening prayer immediately after we've done that hymn. Shall we stand? Come the fount of every blessing. Number 13, 1, 3. Come the fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for song of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious song, and song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I praise thy Ebenezer, here by thy help I come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering Father, 
Bless us individually and collectively. Cover us with your grace and your mercy and let your kind of glory envelop us, Almighty God. Hasten the steps of those who are on their way, Almighty God. Let them come and receive what you have to offer. And may you receive from them what they have to give to you. Thank you for your blessing upon this service today. May you anoint the person who will be preaching the word, Almighty God. May you cover him from head to foot. Bless him and bless his family to Almighty God. We thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' holy name we pray and give thanks. Amen. The scripture passage is taken from Ruth chapter 1. We're going to be reading from verse 1 to 22. That's Ruth 1, 1 to 22. And our sister, Angela Dixon, will come and read for us. Good morning, everyone. Scripture, scripture is taken from Ruth 1, and I'll be reading the entire passage. I'll be reading the New Living Translation version, and it reads, In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malam and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they separated. Then Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah, and the other woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Marlon and Kilian died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah, by giving them good crops again. Say, so Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back to your mother's home. And may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No. My daughters, return to your parents' home, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. And again they wept together. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her daughter, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. The two of them continued on their way. When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. 
Is it really Naomi? The women asked. Don't call me Naomi, she responded. Instead, call me Mara, for the Almighty has made my life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. They arrived in Bethlehem in late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest. This is the word of God. This morning, not just to look about, 
want to truly give him a heart worship this morning. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for She 
time is now fleeting. The moments are passing. Passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering. That night is coming. Especially those of you who have not been able to make it out so far. We're happy to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Put your hands together and welcome everybody in the house of the Lord. It's wonderful to see you, my brothers and my sisters, as we come together. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time this morning in public worship, we're happy to have you. May the Lord bless you. You have made the right decision to be in the house of the Lord to worship and adore Him. Hallelujah. 
for those who are joining us on social media, we are happy to have you. For those of you who are with us for the very first time, thank you for joining with us today. And we trust that today's service will be a blessing to your heart. To those who are returning, thank you for returning. And may the Lord bless you today, likewise, as we worship Him. Today we continue our look at the experience of persons who are having difficult times. And boy, what a difficult week it was for us as a nation. We have come out of a very difficult and a very painful week. And we are trusting the Lord to sustain those who have lost their loved ones. And we pray that the Lord will sustain and strengthen and encourage especially our security forces who have had a very difficult week this week. We continue to pray for our nation and of course we never lose sight of what's happening in the globe around us, around the world. What is happening there, we continue to pray for our people that God's presence, power and love will surround us in these difficult and challenging times. We have been looking to the book of Ruth for encouragement and strength, for guidance, for principles that will enable us to deal with these trying and difficult times and out of it to bring praise, glory, and honor to our God. So last week, we looked at the experience of Naomi, that woman of strength, that woman of faith. And this week, we said we want to spend some time to look at her daughter-in-law, Ruth. Last week, we looked closely at Naomi's actions as it influenced her daughter-in-law's. That is Ruth chapter 1. And in that discussion last week, we recognized and celebrated Naomi's values, her character, her consideration and concern, her kindness for her daughter-in-law. We acknowledge that the story of Naomi can very well be our story at some point in our lives. She said, I went out full and I came back empty. Many of us have had that experience and many persons who have had that experience are not in a position today to celebrate it because the experience broke their spirits and did not allow them to rise above their circumstances. Naomi's story is a story of inspiration. It is a story of a, a witness for God despite all of the challenging times that she encountered. This week, we want to spend some time to look at the resolution made by her daughter-in-law, Ruth, in the 16th verse of the chapter, Ruth spoke to Naomi, who was insisting that she return to her people, to her family, and find a husband and get on with life. Naomi rationalized that out of her concern for Ruth and her other daughter-in-law, Orpha. She was very concerned about them. She was expressing a selfless wish on their behalf that they would return from following her. They would make their lives in Moab where they were far more familiar with the culture and with the social structures that were there. And we heard as Sister Andrea read this passage, Ruth pushing back at Naomi. She replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely, 
if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. What a beautiful passage of scripture. What a beautiful passage of scripture. The King James Version is a little bit more poetic in its expression. Entreat me not to leave thee from following after thee, for wheresoever thou goest, I will go. You, you know, you know it. You, you know it. It's a far more poetic expression of this. And it, 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 it has a little thing about it that when it hits our heart, yes, it, 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 it seals the issue there. But you know, as I reflect on the text, and as we reflect on this text, there are several questions that need to be answered when we think about this expression from Ruth. Because, you know, every one of us wish, pray, hope that the expression and experience of Ruth in relation to Naomi will be ours, even as it relates to one member of our family. Not true. Yes. Isn't that true? Yes. We would like to be of such an influence upon at least one person in life. Yes. A family member, perhaps a co-worker, perhaps a neighbor. What we want is for them to make this resolution in their lives about us and about the God that we serve. Amen. Boy, I would be so excited if at least one person, when they get to heaven, tell God that I am here because of Pastor Webley. I made this decision to follow you, God, because of what I saw and experienced in the life of your servant, Pastor Webley. Isn't that what you want? Yes. Isn't that what you hope for? Yes. And we ask ourselves what it is about the relationship that Ruth and Naomi shared that caused Naomi at a time when Ruth was at her worst, was at her wit's end, to have made such a commitment of loyalty. What it is about Naomi's life that so impressed Ruth that she was so determined not to be separated from her. To the place where she made this commitment and this pledge. Where she says, and listen to her. She says, may God treat me so severe in his judgment. If it is not death that separates us. If it is not death that separates us. If it is not death. Do you have one person in your life that you are so committed to go to the extreme that as long as you live on the face of this earth, it will only be death that will separate you from such a person? And I say the context in which this statement is coming is not at a time when Naomi was full. It is not that Ruth saw something that she can get. It is at a time when Naomi declares, I am empty. I have nothing to give you. Nothing at all to give you. And it is in that context that I want you to think this morning of Ruth making such a resolution, committing herself to be loyal until death do us part. Mm. Mm. Serious death. Serious death. Naomi's life must have impressed Ruth. Naomi's interactions with Ruth must have been gracious and considerate and kind. Because you and I know that people who are kind and gracious and considerate of us have a pull and it pulls us to them rather than push us away. It's not so. It's not so. Ruth must have demonstrated something in her character 
that, that, that sorry, Naomi must have demonstrated something in her character that Ruth says, that's what I want. That's what I am not prepared to be separated from. And I ask that question in the light of the fact that here is a God-fearing woman, Naomi, and her husband, her two sons, who went to Moab. Moab was a land where there were multiplicities of gods, where whichever god you desire, you could have. Moab was not a place that recognized the sovereignty of Almighty God. No. But even as Elamine took his family there and Ruth married her son, Naomi would have gone there among all the gods and she would have remained faithful and would have been a true witness as to who her God is. And more importantly, what the relationship with God should look like while we are living among human beings. That's the key. So I want to believe, and I have targeted this concept in my own head, that she dem demonstrated authentic faith. That Naomi lived and demonstrated to Ruth and the community authentic faith. Authentic faith. What does authentic faith look like? It is not just an activity where you engage in some spiritual disciplines, you know, like going to church, reading your Bible, and praying. As important as those are, authentic relationship and authentic faith is far deeper and more substantive as we reflect upon this passage. She demonstrated authentic faith. It wasn't a faith where she just, as we do in our times, you know, sometimes you know, it, it pains our heart. Where we see church people just take a label and stop themselves. I am a Pentecostalist. I am a missionary. I am an Adventist. I am a that. And that's all it represents, a label. A label. And we have to be careful because God has not called us to be a people who are just engaged in rituals. God has called us to a people, to be a people who have a relationship with him. A relationship, an authentic relationship with God. A relationship that does not start today and end tomorrow when difficulties come. A relationship where we are not going to be blaming God for the issues, the inconveniences that come our way. This authentic relationship that we have is a relationship that acknowledges God for who he is. It is a relationship that will acknowledge that yes, God is almighty. That there is nothing beyond his ability to do. Hello? Hello? God is the Almighty One. He says, with men, something seems impossible. But with God, all things are possible. When it comes to God, we must be conscious of the fact. That God is able to do that which we in our own hearts and minds sometimes seem, think it is impossible. This relationship takes time. This relationship with God acknowledges him as the sovereign God. The God who is in control. The God to whom all people and all things are subject. <laughs> Boy, isn't it true that there are times when we would like to have our own way, to do our own thing, to go where we want to go, whenever we want to go? Isn't it 
true that in the relationships that we share, that there are times when we feel that we are, as the artist sings it, I and I want to rule my destiny. Is it true that there are times when we have been so cultured to believe that we are in control? And what happens when there are situations that come upon us just to remind us that we are not in control? Hmm. This authentic relationship about this God that Naomi demonstrated to Ruth is a forgiving God. He is a forgiving God. Man, I, I, I just want to remind each of us this morning that as long as we are on this earth, we are prone to sin. Hello? And sin is not just about what we do, you know. Sometimes it's the omissions, it's the things that we don't do. It's not so. It's not so. Yes, there are times when we should do it and we don't. But our God is a forgiving God. I, I, Sister Audrey set the tone, she said, softly and tenderly. Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Sometimes when you listen to some, some pastors preach, you know, you think God has this big, masculine, rough voice, you know. And God is always loud and echoing and thundering. Oh, there are times when that is necessary. But softly and tenderly, you hear God call you by name. Sometimes you have to ask yourself a second time, did I hear by day? <laughs> yes! God wants this relationship with his people where he understands that as human beings we fail. But he looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs. He sees our needs and he responds to our needs. We are reflecting the other night in our Bible study, and we said that God is constant, you know, because when Adam sinned, and when Adam knew that he sinned, and you know, God would come down at the same time in the cool of the day, and God would have a conversation with him. And we're told that after Adam sinned, when he heard the voice of God, and I don't think it was a thundering, frightening voice. He would call Adam as he would normally do. Adam. Adam, my friend. Adam, my child. Where are you? Adam says, I heard your voice. I realized that I was naked. And I went to hide myself. Why oh, some stupid things we say sometimes? Where, where can we hide from God? Tell me where you can hide from God. Come on, talk to me now. Where can we hide from God? I heard your fault. And I went into the bathroom to hide from your God. I, 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 I went downstairs to hide from your God. I went down to the garden to hide from your God. To do what? Hide? How do you hide from God? How do you hide from God? <laughs> Isn't it just a joy and a beauty to know that we serve a forgiving God? Amen. Now you need to run and hide from him this morning. You don't need to run and hide from him this morning. You can accept his invitation softly and tenderly as he calls your name. He says, come home. Come home. He who are weary, weary of sin, weary of the struggles of life, he says, come find rest. 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 Come home. Come home. Come home. And then Naomi demonstrated to Ruth that this God that she served, this God that I serve is a faithful God. Hallelujah. He is just such a faithful God. 
Hey, if you are sitting in this place this morning, if you're hearing me anywhere across the globe this morning, one thing I can be confident about is that each of us have had an experience where someone has failed us. Where we were depending on the faithfulness of someone and that someone has failed us. At least once in your life. Not true. Yes. At least once in your life, somebody has failed you. And Naomi demonstrated to Ruth that this God, this God that I serve, is not only the Almighty God. This God that I serve is not only the sovereign Lord of the entire universe. This Lord that I serve is not just a forgiving God, but he is a faithful God. I can depend on him 24-7, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can depend upon my God. Yes, yes. So when Naomi entreats no, when she encouraged him, her, when she says to him, to her, go back to your family, go back to your social structures where you are so familiar, go back to your familiar culture, when Naomi assess all of that, when she look at the choice that is before her, when she looked at what she would be going back to. She made this resolution and treat me not. Don't encourage me to leave you, Naomi. I don't care what the circumstance of your life is today. I know that as long as you go back to your God, your tomorrow is going to be brighter. Your tomorrow is going to be a better tomorrow, irrespective of what I have in Moab. It cannot be compared with what you will have in Bethlehem. Ruth is not the first person to make this commitment to the God of Israel, you know. In fact, if you're reading the Bible chronology, you will recognize that Rahab made this decision. Rahab, under Joshua's leadership, yes. made a similar decision that she would identify with Israel, the God of Israel. Yes. And she told us why. She told us when we read that passage of scripture that God has demonstrated his power and his love for Israel that no other nation has ever experienced. And she says, because of your God, all the people here in Jericho and around are fretting. They are worried. They are fearful. Because your God loves you more than we have ever seen a God love a people. Your God defend you and fight for you. Your God has done something that our God seems incapable of doing. He has brought down the fears of Egypt where every people think that the fears of Egypt were God. In fact, that's what Pharaoh thought of himself. That he was a God. He was mighty. He was powerful. And you know, Miriam had a song. Yes. Miriam had a song. She celebrated the power and the mighty of God because God with a little piece of stick, with a little piece of outstretched stick, parted the water that water that had the potential to destroy and drown them God parted it and God made it away for them Rahab heard about that and heard of how God had destroyed the fear of and she says I want to be part of that community oh yes oh yes Yes, if we are going to make the impact that Naomi made on Ruth, if we are going to have this influence, then we have to engage in authentic relationship with God. We're not into this little ritual, pian, pian, worship of God. 
We're not into this thing where we engage in mere rituals. Today is what? Today is Sunday. You're not going to church. Go be a damn, take up your Bible and go to church. It's more than that. It's far more than that. As important as it is for us to assemble ourselves, the relationship is far more than that. Authentic Christian faith is about a daily relationship with the Almighty God. Bible or no Bible? Whether you can read one word in it or not. It does not matter. What matters is how you relate to God. Amen. I hear God says, man, look at on the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. That's what God is about. A heart that comes out of it and how that relates to him. Amen. It is this authentic relationship that Naomi modeled in Moab that influenced her daughter-in-law. So that she made this resolution. She recognized and she accepted that if we are going to be modeling this relationship, then we are called to model it to all kinds of people, you know. Yes. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Our Christian faith is to be modeled to all kinds of people. Which means then that if we are going to be, to be modeling this authentic faith, that our relationship with God and with people has to be the same. Yes. It has to be a relationship that is accepting of people where they are. If we can accept people where they are and be non judgmental about them in our attitudes and actions, yes. our attitudes and actions, then what a difference it is going to make. What a difference it is going to be. Nobody was pretending that the people of Moab were God-fearing people. Nobody was prepared, pretending that. In fact, if you hear what Naomi, what, that, what Naomi recognized, she said, go back to your people and to your gods. Go back to them. So she went there and she did not demand of the people of Moab to worship the way she worshipped. No, she didn't. What she did was that she related to them as the creation of God. And she sought to love them as God loved them. In text, we learn that she prayed for them. Yes. <laughs> I love it. She prayed for them. Yes, while she lived among them, she prayed for them. She raised them up in her prayers before God. She did not curse them out and condemn them. No. No. She loved them. She cared for them. She accepted them for who they are. She believed that in God's time, God by his spirit would draw them unto himself. She was not involved in any trickery. There was no need to use deception. Not at all. Not at all. The Christian community must be careful in how it articulates the expectations of God for its community. We must be. God love them, not you. God love them, not true. God love them, not true. The most known Bible verse in all of the entire Bible is John 3 16. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world, all the peoples of the world, all nations, all people, whether they are conforming to the manner in which He calls us to worship or not, He still loves them. It's in my Bible. Yes. It's in my Bible. For God so loved the entire world that he gave, he made a sacrifice. He gave us the entire world. His one and only most precious gift. And he says that whosoever, whosoever would respond in faith to him, 
Hallelujah. Did not perish, but have eternal life. How can we preach otherwise? How can we preach otherwise? How can we live otherwise? We have to live among them. We have to love them. Are they as lovable as we would want them to be? No. You think you were as lovable before God said this unto you? No. If some of us ever look back where we have come from and the things we do, how we displease God. Amen. Hello? Hello? If God should judge you as we sins deserve, no one would have ever lift up the holy hand. <laughs> None of us would be able to lift up the holy hand before God. So all of us come the same way before God as we declare, as the Psalms declares it each and every day, create within me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Within me within me as we recognize who we are in light of the Holy God. Amen. There's no other prayer that we can pray. Yes. No other prayer that we can pray. We accept them for who they are. And we live among them and demonstrate before them. We open ourselves before them. As it says, you know, we have to expose our strengths and our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities before them. We have to do that. We have to do that. Yes, if we are going to impress upon them, if we are going to influence them, then they must know that we too are human beings. We too are human beings. There are moments in our own lives when, <coughs> look, be honest, we don't even want to be around our own selves. Isn't that true? Sometimes we don't miserable people. Hello? You don't have to take a little bit away from you and yourself sometimes. I'm going to sit down on a tree. I'm going to cool out. Sometimes we don't want me wrong to go and sin. But God. But God. His grace and His favor, His mercies are extended to us. In our weaknesses. You know, I love the Bible. The Bible does never cover up for us, you know. The Bible tells us that Jesus chose 12 disciples, not you? Yes. Not you? Yes. And how much was with him on the day of his crucifixion? How much was there standing and running around and celebrating him? The Bible talks about it. You don't have to answer say it. You don't want me to say it on, 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 on social media. No, no, it's there. Peter pulled up our sword and said, Oh, I'm a dead body, nobody can tell you. And he was a good sword, man. <laughs> but on the day when the pressure came, he was missing. He says, Lord, let me tell you something. Over this dead body, nobody can touch you. Jesus says, The devil has planned to see if you as weak. But I've prayed for you. Because before tomorrow morning when the cock crow, you will have denied me. Not one, not two, but three times. Did it happen? Yes. And who does the Bible say sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? Was Judas one of the twelve? Yes. We must check with him. We must check with him. Lest when we think we stand, we fall. Check yourself. Check yourself. Yes, Christians do have weaknesses. But if we are not careful, the enemy will exploit us. Yes, he will. Christians are vulnerable too. And we must therefore draw near to God. We must always be drawing near to God. So then this resolution by Ruth was influenced by what Naomi demonstrated to her. Naomi demonstrated to her 
a relationship with God. An authentic relationship with God. A relationship that celebrates God as the Almighty One. That celebrates God as the Sovereign Lord. That celebrates God as the Forgiving One. And celebrate God as a faithful one. I pray that in all our interactions this week, that we will demonstrate this God in community as we go forward. And as we go, we should not be afraid to live among the people that we are called to live among. Because we are humans like them. We have strengths, weaknesses, and vulnerabilities. God knows that. He understands that. And therefore, we will always be calling upon him to give us the strength that we need. It is that authentic faith and relationship with God that is going to make the difference in the way we witness and live among people each and every day. There is only one prayer that we all have today. God help us. Amen. 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 And the church says, Amen. God has spoken. Yes. I have no doubt in my mind that you've heard the voice of God. Now, the question is, what am I going to do with that word? What are you going to do with that word? You go out there this week. Let the faith of Naomi be your faith. Let the example, examples of Naomi be your example. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We're going to close. I'm going to sing this song of reassurance. Great is thy faithfulness. And as we sing, I'm going to invite you just to stand and allow the Lord to say in and through you, I have hope in God. Number 33. Great is thy faithfulness. We invite him to stand. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been loved forever.
that was given of Nehomi. We pray that this will be our example, that this will be our lifestyle, that those around us will see not us, but you in and through us. So Lord, as we leave from this place, remind us of our past, encourage us what you can do for us in our future, and to make, Lord God, this country, this parish, this world, a better place. We say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.